Senior Assistant Director of MBA Admissions here at Georgetown McDonough. Um, I trust that you all have had a splendid day. Um, it gives me great pleasure to extend my gratitude to each and every one of you for joining us this evening. Now, we are delighted to kick off the Flex MBA Online Summit, where our esteemed MBA students um, and the McDonough Career Center will share their expertise and insights. Prepare to be enlightened with invaluable takeaways. We will commence with our student experience panel featuring current Flex MBA Online students who will share their experience in the new online MBA program. Now, this will be followed by a brief Q&A, and that's where you'll use the Q&A feature in, on your Zoom to ask questions. All right, let's get the questions kicked off with our online um, student panel. Now, I'd like you guys to please introduce yourself and share a little bit about your background and the motivation for why you pursued an MBA degree at McDonough. And we can start with Aaron. Sure thing. So um, thank you for having me. Um, uh, my background is uh, in industrial engineering. I studied engineering undergrad, and uh, I now work at Disney um, in analytics and um, kind of wanted to move in the direction of more business and more managerial side of things. Um, I had been working in a lot of financial data analytics, so it made sense to move in this direction. But really what kicked me off to uh, apply now rather than later or any other time into this school um, I work specifically for Cruise Line, which is uh, growing rapidly, and we're building a lot of ships, and we're all around the world, and first time in Australia, so that global perspective is um, kind of pervasive in everything that Georgetown does, so especially coming into a new role as a manager of my company, uh, that's kind of the skill set that I was looking for, and uh, perfectly complemented the engineering meets business, but the analytics kind of melds those two things together. Awesome. Thank you so much. How about you, Samantha? Yep. Hello. My name is Samantha Brown. Um, I have about 15 years of experience in uh, enterprise technology consulting. So that's big tech for big businesses. Um, and I was really looking for a way to reskill and retool. I'm, I'm technically mid-career. Uh, the industry is changing. So I wanted a program that was... Um, you know, with the times, and I felt like this program does that. Awesome. And Anna, how about you? Um, introduce yourself, yourself, share a bit about your background, and what motivated you to pursue an MBA at Georgetown. Yeah, sorry, I'm having a bit of an issue with my Zoom tonight. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna try to fix it. But uh, <laughs> my name is <laughs> My name is Anna Hand, and I am uh, 30 years old. I'm a program engineer uh, slash program manager uh, for a company called Textron Systems up in Baltimore. Uh, we mostly handle um, uh, unmanned vehicles, that kind of stuff. So I am an engineer by trade, but I recently got put into the managerial role, which has been absolute fascinating and one of the reasons that I actually chose Georgetown McDonough was because I felt like this was a possibility for me going into this managerial role and I wanted to get the background in business before I was pushed into that and so here I am. Awesome well we're so happy to have you especially not only just been in our first online MBA cohort, but just, you know, um, that uh, cohort, it was super selective and um, we're so happy that we have all of you here. So thank you. Um, thank you. So my next question for you guys is what surprised you the most about the program when you started? And we can start with you, Samantha. Yeah, um, so I will say I'm a transfer student and I was so surprised by how much the program office and you all like care. I remember during our residency week, um, you guys thought we ran out of lunch and you came in and you were like, did everybody eat and stuff like that? And I was like, wow, they really <laughs> care, right? They really care because we're adults and you didn't have to do that. Um, but that feeling is really throughout the program. So in tutoring, in the way we can talk to our advisors, in the way I randomly have conversations with you. And I really appreciate that. Awesome. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much for sharing that. How about you, Anna? What surprised you the most about the program when you started? You're on mute. 
sorry, what for whatever reason my screen is backwards, but yeah. um, I, I don't know. I can't figure it out. Um, so the thing that surprised me was just even being online, how much uh, we connected as a cohort. So like they put us into groups of five or six people. And uh, especially with that week long residency that they have for us, us at the beginning of the program, uh, we were all able to come together and we worked a pretty intense um, project during that residency. And um, it just kind of forced us to get to know our group. And I won't speak for everybody, but my group um, from that first semester, like we're really close. We're really tight knit. We still, most of us are kind of um, mid Atlantic DC region and like we'll get together on a weekend or something like that. And, um, you know, if we have a final coming up, we'll study or we'll even just go out and grab dinner and drinks. Um, so just like the bonding and the connection that we found through an online program was very surprising. That's awesome. And how about you, Anne? I, I would totally echo that, that uh, we're really close. Um, silly example on my end, since I, I live really close to the Disney parks. Um, when fellow classmates come down to Orlando era, of course, we have to go to the parks together. So super fun. Um, but I, I would also <laughs> go further and say that um, it, it's surprising how, I guess, ingrained we are, even though that we're online, that we can be part of the on-campus experiences. Um, like all the students that are in DC, of course, can be on campus if they choose to be, but being states away, I still feel in tune with that. That uh, even some of the full-time in-person in students I, I communicate with on a daily basis. And we talk about our work because we mirror the same classes. So even outside of our own core, we can pretty well align with what we're studying. Awesome. I love how you guys are like building a bond outside of the classroom, you know, just like even in person. And it was such a joy actually meeting you guys in person at the first residency, because it's like, we know we've had conversations or, you know, through an interview or, you know, all virtual and just actually seeing you in person was such a, like a great feeling. It was like, I already knew you in a sense as well. Um, and it's kind of like you guys have uh, meshed well together as a group when, you know, during that residency. So that was really cool to see. Awesome. So, um, starting out with you, Samantha, how do you navigate the balance between work, school, and your personal life? Um, and what do you wish you've done differently, if anything? <laughs> um, I'm not sure that I I balance well, and I, I think that's okay. <laughs> um, I think in life, you actually have more trade-offs, right, than balances. And as long as, sometimes you'll be 60-40, sometimes you're 50-50, but as long as you're not 80-20 all the time, then that's okay, right? So um, I know I had a tendency to like pause this part of my life so I can attend to this part of my life. And I wouldn't encourage that. I think that's, um, I think that causes you to miss out on some of the things that may be swirling around you in life. Um, but one of the things that helped me kind of with those trade-offs is um, like I, I rent a co-working space. So in between a, my house and the, the city, I live in Atlanta um, and where I work, like if I need to plop down somewhere and study, that co-working space has just been so amazing, right? It saves me time. I show up to places on time, which is <laughs> nice. It's kind of difficult to do and I can make it to class. So um, that's the one of the things that I kind of invested in in order so I can have that kind of trade-off and balance. Awesome. How about you, Anna? Yeah, so um, <laughs> as you might be able to tell just from this uh, this Zoom session, I am a bit of a chaotic personality. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I kind of feel like my life, I'm just like a tornado that's uh, <laughs> roaming aimlessly. Um, so it's really important for me to have structure and um, work just by nature of what I do doesn't provide me with a lot of that, but that has been what is so nice about um, the program between the asynchronous and the synchronous sessions. Um, I feel like the professors have done such a good job of structuring things. So I know that regardless of whatever chaos I come across in my life, um, I am going to have class on Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 p.m. 
And for the most part, I would say um, the professors also kind of keep the assignments due around similar times. And I know like being the first cohort, there's a lot of like trying to online cohort, like trying to figure out how that works. And I feel like they've done a good job of just structuring things to where you know that this is what you need to do. Um, And then if work does get in the way, like Last fall, I literally had on five hours notice had to fly to Denmark and I had to call one of my professors and be like, uh, so sorry, I have to go to Denmark. I cannot um, be here and I can't be in your class and I or I can't do this assignment. And the professor was like, OK, that's fine. Here's how I can work with you um, around that work life balance. So as long as you're willing to recognize, OK, that school has the structure, um, I feel like you can build your life around it really easily definitely that's helpful and how about you Erin like what what is your balance between work school and your personal life and would you have done anything differently yeah um uh, I also had to go on a crazy trip my first week of classes which is just about the worst timing um besides finals I guess but um faculty professors are so so kind in making any structure work because it's it really is about promoting us and getting us um, where we want to be in our career. So that's kind of reflected and echoed in all the communication I've had so far. Also, um, my company's fortunate enough to allow me to do this kind of work and um, help me through my education a bit with timing. So I have the flexibility, like our first week um, was, I guess our second week was on campus. So I was able to do that and continue working at the same time that um, I, I guess it's worked out really well so far, but, uh, looking back at what would I do differently? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but average student takes like three credits at a time, um, doing flex program. And I'm currently, um, double that. And, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, a balance. Like Samantha Mm -hmm. said, it's definitely a give and take that, uh, as I've learned how much time it takes in certain courses. And I'm also like dual enrolling in other um, schools that it's uh, different between each type of material as well. That accounting is definitely not the same as marketing, not the same as you know yeah. finance. So it's kind of that that balance. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I I appreciate you guys definitely like giving us the real deal because that's what you know our audience want to hear. Like just real life expectations. Um, and just thinking about realistic expectations of life, I I, I kind of want to gain some insight on what it is um, in the life of an online MBA student. Like how much time do you actually invest in, you know, outside class on like your readings, like your group projects, homework and other coursework? Um, We can start, uh, go back to you, Aaron. Yeah, um, I'd say that at least for like group work, we like to meet maybe twice a week. Um, We had mentioned previously that we have these like initial subgroups and um, we have, I guess in our second term here, a second subgroup for our other classes. So Mm -hmm. we meet in the first subgroup to do like practice problems and study for things, probably like an hour or two a week um, on the weekends. And then the other group is much more like close in right before we got a report due, we we get in and we crunch it through. Um, We have one of those right after this meeting. We'll be working on that. Uh, (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Yeah. So um, I'd say somewhere in the uh, four to five hour range um, throughout the week. I think it's totally reasonable for doing a part-time program like this. Yeah, awesome. What about you, Anna? Yeah, so um, I think it kind of depends on what work we're doing. You know, if we've got case studies, um, you know, it takes a while sometimes to like crank through those case studies if you're reading it, taking notes, and then actually um, writing the report. Um, But I think that's what's so nice about surrounding yourself with your other teammates is um, we split that work. So, um, you know, you're not having to do all the heavy lifting on those case studies like every single time. Um, Personally, I like to make sure that I'm dedicating about a half hour a night just to reading so I don't like (laughs) lose my sense of where I am in my classes. Um, And I can just, especially if you have like, 
accounting on Monday, by the time you get back around to accounting the next Monday, that's a lot of time, especially compared to like an undergraduate program where you're having classes at least twice, if not three times a week. And so if you just dedicate a little bit of time, um, a half hour every other night to each subject, um, I, I think that that's, that's pretty good, but, um, you can kind of make it what you want to be completely honest. Yeah, just be like flexible with your schedule, just carving out that study yeah. time either like every yeah. week or weekly. If you just want to just put all that time together, I probably will break yep. it up, but I think like yeah. putting all that together would kind of be hard right. on yourself. <laughs> um, and Samantha, how much time do you invest outside of class? Um, so I I leave my Saturdays and my Sundays for class. So I try to like just get everything done over the weekend. And it's because uh, I travel Monday through Friday for work. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, and then I go to tutoring throughout the week. So it kind of evens out, but I do the bulk of my work over the weekend. Awesome. And and yeah, I, th- I think that that's a great schedule as well. Like whatever works for you and you're getting your work done and it's actually like whatever you're studying, making that stick and remembering and, you know, just carving out that time. And if it's good for you, I think that is what's best. Um, thank you for that, guys. Uh, moving on to our next question. How would you describe the school's learning culture and environment? Um, is it competitive or collaborative? We'll just go back to you, Samantha. Um, I think it's both um, because you have people coming in from different schools, right? And at all different walks of life, different phases. So I think you can get people that came from like more competitive schools, um, but like Georgetown, it, itself is very collaborative right so if you need help like the tutors are amazing um (laughs) if you need help you can get help um so i think it's collaborative in in that that way awesome how about you aaron um 100 it's collaborative uh having these little subgroups has been a big deal that uh, it could feel competitive if we we let it go that way, but I think um, through the style of teaching, through the the projects that we work on, we're kind of pressured into working together as a, a team, which I think is really applicable to the real world. It's not so much you're competing against your own team as much as, well, these are very real skills to be able to work and delegate. And if you're not available because you got to go on a business trip, then other people have to pick up the slack. It feels real. Awesome. Anna? Yeah, I um, I definitely think it's a little bit of both. You know, it's that's the nice part about these groups is you get to kind of feel out the different personality types. And some people, you know, might click with their first group better than they click with their second group. And I do think some of that does, at the end of the day, come down to competition. Um, you know, if you're looking at this program at Georgetown, like you're not satisfied just doing the bare minimum right like you want to be you want the best and you want to be the best and I I personally think that that leads to um, a really healthy academic environment if um, you know everybody understands uh, that there is a little bit of competition but at the end of the day like um, we can't tear each other down either you know and so um I, I think that that's really important and I really liked that. And then obviously I've talked so much about my, about my group to begin with. Like we just found a very collaborative environment to the point where like, we don't just talk about class anymore. You know, um, <laughs> if one of us is having an issue at work, like those problems are solved in our group chat. Yeah. Um, if we're applying for a new job, you know, it's the same thing. Or, you know, even like I had a bunch of drama at my job a couple weeks or a couple months ago and I was chatting with my group chat about it and every single person sent over like their job recommendation page for their company. And I think that that's like a really healthy, competitive yet collaborative environment that's building all of us up. Definitely awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Awesome. So getting into like uh, your relationships with your professors, like how often do you interact with them outside of the virtual classroom? Do you find the professors innovative with how they connect um, 
with how they connect with you as far as virtually um, or in person, whether like if you're at a residency or say if you're in campus and you know that they're there and you kind of schedule a chat with them. So, you know, just thinking about that um, relationship, like how often would you interact with them outside of class? And we can start with Samantha. Um, so I try to attend office hours quite regularly, and that's because every professor has a style of teaching that once you kind of hook onto, you can use in your everyday life. So um, we had accounting of corporate finance, corporate finance accounting and reporting, and she delivers the material to you by fact pattern, and it's really cool, right? So um, I try to engage with them um, during office hours. And then when we are in residency, I thought it was cool that the professors, they, they came to like happy hour and would talk to us and they're, they're actually really cool people. So, um, you know, I try. When awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, let's hear from you, Anna. Yeah, so um, I like to connect with professors if I have issues. I'm usually not one that goes to like office hours and that kind of stuff. I mean, to be completely honest, like that's usually even in my undergrad, I wasn't necessarily a student like that. So I have found mm -hmm. that there has like that I have to find other ways to connect with my professors. And so like one of the ways that I've done that is, is through like volunteering for these admissions events you know um there's always professors around at those events and so I get to sit down and talk with them um and maybe it's not necessarily about their class um but it is like a good way to do that and even the other day like um I was really excited to be nominated for uh like a dinner with the dean kind of like sit down chat uh Ooh. with Sudipta and I was so excited to go. I, I drove down to Washington, D.C. And, and I did that. And one of the things that I learned um, through that was I was telling them how I was trying to get a recommendation letter through one of the professors and how I was like going through all of their profiles. And I just found one that I loved her research. I loved um, just kind of the things that she focused on. And I was talking to Sudipta about, oh, I would, I would love to just meet with her, but it's hard to just like cold email a professor, you know, like even an undergrad, like that was really hard they, to get a professor to respond to emails can be kind of difficult. And so um, she was telling me, well, have you thought about doing like a graduate assistantship? I didn't know that that was even something available to us as Flex Online students. Mm -hmm. And like to know that we can do that and we have those opportunities. And Sudipta was like, just email me who you want to work with mm -hmm. and we'll see what we can do. Like, we'll see if we can make it happen. And um, I think that that's really special that, uh, that, that you're able to make those connections, even if you're online. Definitely. I love that. Aaron, how about you? I'm taking notes. Thank you for that tip. I don't know that either. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I, um, I've been up to campus a couple of times, um, and when I am on campus, I effectively just kick down doors, uh, knocking around, like hitting all the doors as I go, like, um, especially doing our first residency, we met a lot of the professors we'll have over the course of our core classes. So getting to have that kind of in-person communication early on before necessarily we need to be on a like professor student relationship basis, um, I found very helpful. And then online, um, I, a couple of times now, I've emailed a professor about some question. They're like, really great question, Zoom? <laughs> so it's been a, just a conversation between the two of us, like talking about something rather than formal office hours. I totally agree. I, uh, I stray away from the everybody asking questions in a large group setting. But uh, then again, here we are doing exactly yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> awesome. So... What activities have you guys been involved in outside of classes and why did you choose them? And let's start with Anna. So I am a big sports girly. Uh, I went to several football games uh, this uh, fall at Georgetown, which has been great. Um, and I was able to like message the other people and that are in DC and that kind of stuff and be like, hey, let's get together. Uh, let's go to a football game. And and so we did that. The other thing that um, was really fun that was a Georgetown event, um, that it's not really an activity, but uh, they had grad gala 
a uh, um, couple months ago, and um, it was literally uh, we called it grad school prom in my uh, little group that we went with, and we all got dressed up in big formal dresses, mm-hmm. and um, the Georgetown grad school had rented out um, the. Uh, National Building Museum in DC. And so we got to go there and, you know, we all showed up in an Uber XL and had a great time and we were all dressed up. And um, we not only got to connect with people in our group that we loved and we knew, but we also got to meet people across like the entirety of Georgetown, which was really, really fun. And yeah, some of it is networking and all that kind of stuff, but it was just really connecting with people on a human level, taking a break and kind of celebrating being at Georgetown and all the work that we do throughout the year. Awesome. And how about you, Samantha, in the, um, what activities are you involved in outside of the classes and why did you choose them? I'm not involved in a lot. I did join the um, Black NBA Association. I think they're pretty cool. They do um, trips. And if you ever need help with anything, they have a a WhatsApp chat that's always active. And they're on campus too, but um, I'm not on campus. But I kind of relegate my my, uh, extracurricular activities to um, whatever gets me more visibility at work. But you do have great associations. Thank you. Aaron, how about you? I'm, I'm fully on the nerdy side of the, the spectrum here, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm a part of the um, apprenticeship and teaching program. So I'm learning how to effectively teach um, in a upper education level environment. So doing like mini mock-up classes and stuff, that kind of um, vibe as well as um, doing AI research with the uh, School of Computing. So um that's been very interesting. Uh, they they gave me some money to to do some research specifically in again pedagogy. How does Georgetown want to acclimate to the AI environment, and how do we deal with students who do and don't know uh, much about AI? Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And then my last question for you before we hop into some Q&A, see if we have some questions waiting for us from the audience. My last question would be, what advice do you have for an incoming um, online MBA student or just the overall MBA student um, and, you know, or those who are still, you know, considering applying for us? Like, what advice would you give them? Let's start with Samantha. Yeah, um, so I think we're just kind of in a day and age where the, everybody's industry is changing. Um, so, and everybody's trying to reskill and retool. So you need to figure out what your edge is and go to a school that can help you discover that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so make sure you go to a school that is aligned with what you want to do. Awesome. And how about you, Anna? Yeah, so I have two things. The first one, um, and this is just like the biggest life lesson that I've learned is do not be afraid to fail. Um, You know, you are going to go through a lot. You're going to go through a lot of hardships. There are going to be times when it's really, really difficult in this program. Um, But like, if you approach that and from a place where you're scared and you're scared to lose, you're scared to fail, um, you know, it becomes a bit of a self fulfilling prophecy. And so don't be afraid to fail. Go out on the limb. Um, if if you do fail, okay, that's great. Um, you have professors and other students in this program that are going to be there to pick you up. The other thing that I want to say is that you need to take advantage of the um, the things that Georgetown offers. Two important things are the career center. The MBA career center is absolutely amazing. Um, I got nominated for this Women in Engineering Award um, through work for like a big international organization. And I went to the Career Center and they helped me build my entire packet. Um, it is the one of the best features of the MBA program by far. Um, I've gone to several different schools and this one is the best career center that I have ever encountered. Um, The other one is therapy. Um, We need to take care of our mental health a lot in this program. And um, Georgetown has like set me up with therapy and um, a lot of it has been at no cost. And that is huge. It's amazing. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you for that. And let's hear from you, Aaron. I, uh, I I preach this with everyone I, I work with, especially being at Disney. We, we're all about stories. But 
I say craft your story as best you can to be a consistent trajectory that wherever you are now, whatever you want to be doing, make sure, I'm going to demand the hit on this too, but align your trajectory and craft the story to the school you want to go to. And then of course the school is going to be like the, the heavy hitter, like, yeah, here we are at McDonough now. This is like, you did it. And where you, where you want to go with your career is uh, of course following with that. And it's, um, it's interesting that, um, of course, we're, we're flex and we're online, so we feel like we're confined to just the business school, but really the storytelling can encompass all of Georgetown, mm-hmm. and uh, it's really up to the individual to go get the things, find the resources that um, are readily available. It's just, it's not going to be given to you necessarily, so go get it. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And then let's hop in and see if we have some questions here. I do see one here. Um, the question is, is there a final thesis requirement for the FXO program? Um, I don't know if there's a final thesis. You guys know, I know there is a global business experience and I know that that is like a huge project and like a travel consulting project. And then also of course, at the end of the program, but do you guys know if there's any final, like any ad- additional like thesis? I'm not aware of one because that would require us to do research throughout the program and we're not there yet. So I think it's project based at the end. Yeah. And I think I saw that as a, and I might be wrong, but I believe I saw it as like a class offering. So if you wanted to do something like that, you had the opportunity to do it. And our our certificate programs uh, have similar um, options to do that kind of thing. Like if you want to do specialization and marketing kind of thing, then you'd be taking classes in that vein. And then towards the end, you have like a culminating class in that, but not um, for the whole program. Awesome. Thank you guys. And I saw that Madison um, answered a lot of the questions that was in the back. And then we have one more here. I see. Uh, th- thank you for sharing your experience, everyone. It's great to see a range of industries represented here, um, given that the program is primarily remote. What made you choose Georgetown specifically over the illustrious top schools offering flex online MBAs? <laughs> Let's start with Aaron. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I think when I was doing my my interview um, with Georgetown, I was kind of in between a couple of schools still. Um, really, the deciding factor for me, of course, was I had to do online. I could not uh, stop doing my job, so I I needed it to be online. And Georgetown, I guess won my heart because of the uh, global perspective. And that is like totally killer in my story here that I'm trying to craft that as I, I'm aiming to go into a globally oriented company and be in this leadership level of it, it's kind of critical. So at least for me, the story aligned perfectly for this global perspective. Awesome, let's hear from you, Samantha. Um. Yeah, so two things really, the stability to what Anna was kind of pointing to earlier, right? Like my work life is chaotic and I'm always traveling. So I knew Monday, Wednesday, those are school days. Also, I did not want to be, nothing against PhD students, but I didn't want to be taught by PhD students. I wanted to be taught by esteemed professors who actually did the research, who are the head of you know national organizations. That was important to me to get that firsthand knowledge. And uh, I think I've been to other schools and they have PhD students teaching and we have like real professors teaching. So I thought that was great. Awesome. Anna? Yeah, so um, I actually had Brie on for my interview and I I know I said (laughs) this, uh, I chose Georgetown um, because it was Georgetown. Um, I loved that they had the online program. I didn't even realize that it was the first cohort, to be completely honest, to do online. Um, I just assumed that coming out of Georgetown, it was going to be great um, because you get a certain amount of pedigree from that name, you know, and not only are the professors that are teaching us absolutely experts in their field, and we have learned that even in the past few months, like our professors know what they're doing and they're good teachers. Um, but also the people that you are around, as I alluded to earlier, like everybody that is in this program is here because they do not settle. And um, the connections that you are making and the networking 
is absolutely amazing. Um, everybody here is is going to be an expert in their field eventually, and you can just feel that coming out of that class. And so, um, if you're going to invest all of this time, energy, blood, sweat, tears, and most importantly, <laughs> money, because uh, Grad school is a lot of money, whether you go to Georgetown or wherever you are spending a lot of money to do that, you want to make sure that you get a return on investment. And Georgetown is absolutely that return on investment. Awesome. And anyone just want to add last thoughts and then we can definitely uh, close out our student panel. Um, Aaron, last thoughts, anyone last thoughts? Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Aaron, Samantha, Anna, for being with us this evening for the Flex MBA Online student panel. Um, I appreciate uh, you being here and giving your insights and student experience in our online MBA program. Um, but now we are going to move to the second uh, portion of our um, programming for this evening. I hope you all have enjoyed the Flex MBA um, Online Summit so far. Now we'll be continuing with the McDonough Career Center panel. Um, during this panel, um, you'll hear from the McDonough School of Business Industry Career Coaches. Um, they will um, share industry insights and the access you'll enjoy to career resources as an online MBA student. And this panel will be moderated by Maureen Cleary, um, the Assistant Dean of the Career Center. And I'm going to pass it over to you, Maureen. Thank you very much, Brian, And welcome, everybody. Uh, it's so great to be speaking with you today. We're really excited to engage with you and start our conversation uh, with you. So we've got, um, unfortunately, not the entire team was able to join tonight, but we've got a good representative of our team. I've got some prepared questions, but I hope that you have questions as well. And just like in the prior session, I'll be monitoring Q&A, so feel free to type those right in. Um, I, again, I'm Morning Theory. I am the assistant dean of the MBA team in the Career Center. Uh, we have we are what we call industry practice leads, and so we have functional alignment. My areas of focus are real estate, hospitality, and financial services. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Trudy to introduce herself. Hello, everyone. It's good to to meet you in this fashion. Um, I'm Trudy McCree, and I cover one function marketing across all industries and then four of the smaller industries consumer products healthcare manufacturing and transportation like maureen we i fill the role of career advisor career coach as well as industry practice leader so we work with you most of our time and the employers um so i'll turn it over to eric young next thanks rudy hi everyone uh, great to have you a part of this session. Uh, I am the industry lead for technology, media, entertainment, and sports, and venture capital. And then I also work with our students who are interested in entrepreneurship. Um, and we have just a fantastic team. We love working with our students, especially our Flex students, and uh, look forward to your questions. Larry, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Larry Verbeese. I'm one of two industry practice leads for the consulting industry. My colleague, Sarah Swigert, is my, the other colleague. She's not she's not able to join us tonight, but uh, Sarah and I both cover consulting. Sarah covers a couple of other things as well. And um, as the other industry practice leads uh, mentioned, we maintain relationships with uh, employers in our industries, and we work with students that are interested with uh you know, recruiting in those particular industries. So we, we've got a great team, as Eric mentioned, and, and, and others have mentioned. And so we look forward to working with you and answering your questions. Thank you. And then Asha. Good evening, everyone. I also echo my colleague's sentiments. Really happy to be a part of tonight's program. I focus particularly in the industries of social impact, governance, international development, renewable energy, and sustainability, as well as education. So I'm here to answer any questions, give a little bit of insight on how the industry functions and anything career related. So I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. As I mentioned, we have some prepared questions that we want to do. Um, and so I think we want to start off by 
you know, how do we help you get started? So the first question, how do you help students set realistic and achievable career goals? And I think we'll back up for a second. I'm going to ask Eric to talk about our summer at webinar series and how we help students onboard the organization. Sure, great. You know, I think this is fairly unique, maybe among some of the other schools that we start very early with you uh, to, you know, really get some of the basics um, covered, such as, you know, helping you think about what do you want to do with your MBA? Uh, and and obviously, you're going to need a resume. And so we walk you through some exercises to to, to capture your accomplishments. So what what is your accomplishment story? As uh, Aaron was talking about stories a little bit earlier. So what are some of these accomplishments that we can then verbalize uh, into a, a resume uh, and get you thinking about then what do you want to do with those skills and those accomplishments uh, post MBA and starting to create then a, um, a career prospectus. Here are the target companies, the target industries, the target functions, the target roles, even the target locations. Uh, so you start thinking about that over the summer as well. And we pull all this together <clears throat> And now you have a bit of a roadmap of, of your aspirations. And then as you go through the program, you know, we'll pick up with other aspects of working with you more personally. Uh, but the summer is important. And so we want you to come on board and get, get some of that thinking and discernment and dreaming um, out of your head onto paper or in the spreadsheets. And then we'll start working with you from there. Thank you for that. I know um, one question that everybody has um, when they're going through the recruitment process is a question about how do students distinguish themselves in the recruitment process? What really makes somebody stand out? And I'm gonna ask Trudy to kick us off on this discussion, although I know all of my colleagues have questions. Yeah, thanks Maureen. <clears throat> you know, of course this is, you know, a little tricky, it varies, but when recruiters or employers are meeting you, they, they want to know you have the skills first, and most of you do. That's why you've been admitted to McDonough. So most of the time, you've got what you need there. The, the real difference is they want to hear you tell your story, that you have logic and passion and good decision-making, even if you've been handed a tough break, you know, which many of us have in our careers. So it's how you tell it, and can you tell it in a way that bridges your prior skills and interests to what their company is doing or that role is asking you to do. Um, so that storytelling is really critical. And then in, in the United States, employers like to feel that you're going to fit into a team and you'll be well liked and um, interesting to work with, um, help the team stay afloat when the challenges come. So likability is a word you'll hear some of us use. It's, it's not that you have to be popular or you have to be extroverted. No, no, just you know, that they want to see a side of your personality that says you care about others and you're part of the team. And if anybody else has anything they'd like to add, because this is obviously a very important question. So just to add to, Trudy had to say, um, the, uh, the distinctions that you're coming into the program with uh, are very important. Your academic distinctions and your work distinctions, I mean, that attracts attention. And, and, and the more notable your distinctions are, uh, that's good. But as Trudy said, once they get to know you, you, you want them to like you, okay? And so that's very important as well. And then the one-on-ones, the, the interactions with the employers, it's like, what did you, uh, you know, what level of effort did you put into getting to know that employer? Because if it's like, well, I'm just interested in this company because, you know, you recruit MBA students and you recruit a lot of Georgetown MBA students, that's very superficial. And so it's a combination of your distinctions, your likability, and, and how hard you're working, uh, all of those things. And, and you know, we're covering a lot of different things, but it's 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 a lot of different things. And and anyone else want to comment further on that question? Yeah, I can add a little bit. Um, you guys pretty much covered most of the bases, but one thing that I would add is when you're you know, looking at a particular role, making sure that the experiences that you have are really highlighted to match that particular role. And so a lot of times, you know, students may have difficulties because they want to sort of just like have a blanket application process. But when you really look at the terminology that is being used for that particular post and you're making sure that 
they match up with what you have on your resume as well as your cover letter. Um, that's really important, as well as making sure that you're really drawing out your accomplishments and really drawing out your experiences, even experiences you may not have even thought about adding. So asking yourself critical questions about what accomplishments you've reached um, thus far is really important. And that will show um, up in your interview process and in your career process, because they'll see that you took the time to actually match what they're looking for with what your previous experiences are. That's great. Thank you, everybody. And I just wanted to add, emphasize, you know, we believe very much in a personalized job search, which means that we work with you as an individual in order to get to your unique goals. Um, I know for myself, in finance and, and my work in consulting, we, of course, are, many students are pursuing the same job. But each student is so different, has a different skill set, have different areas of development, and has different reasons for really pursuing something. And so we want to work with you as that individual and understand not just what you want to be doing during your MBA and post-MBA, but what do you want to be doing five years of paying for somebody to get there? Um, and then also just to add what my colleague said, I spent some time in February getting feedback from my investment banking alumni, which is very technical. You know, there's the 400 technical questions you have to answer. And they all said the same thing, echoing what uh, my colleagues are saying, which is just quite simply, People couldn't tell their story. Those that weren't successful were not able to tell their story. One of the things that everybody would be interested in is industry trends. So I thought maybe we could go around the room and, and talk about industry trends. Now, for an entry, um, when you're coming into the program, this is interesting because you're not looking for a job right now. You may even be coming to an MBA because you're looking for a job. I think with all in, within all of our industries, MBAs are really, uh, and it, you know, there's really any opportunities that are available for you. Um, within my industries, you know, the two big ones being financial services and real estate. Financial services loves MBA students. There's a lot of organized recruitment for those MBA students, which you would be able to take part of in the final year of your MBA. Uh, we do not distinguish between our full-time, our flex, and our flex online students in the final year. You are all getting the same degree. You all have the same qualifications. And so we will open up full-time recruitment to all of you. So there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, difficult to say what the market's going to be in um, three years, but I think it's, you know, for every reason to think it's really robust. Um, and actually, this question with industry trends, I would love to turn it over to Trudy, maybe to talk about healthcare, which I think is a very exciting space. Um, Sure. Thanks, Maureen. Um, yeah, healthcare is one of those industries that's growing, and it's obviously a need in our society today, right? We have more and more technology to help with many more diseases or, or nutritional or health issues. Um, we also see this bigger focus and appreciation for mental health. So the healthcare field is growing strongly, even just today, I saw a new employer that I hadn't heard about before, a relatively small one. Um, so it's a great place to be. And like many industries, there are intersections of health and tech, health and marketing, you know, health and financial services. So um, please consider more than one industry when you come in. Being open-minded is probably a, a good asset. Thank you for that. Um, I know. Um... One question certainly is recruitment. If you're an online student, you're not in DC area, recruitment is open to you, but what does that really look like? So one of the questions um, is, you know, is there hybrid recruitment? Is it online recruitment or is everything in person, which obviously is a disadvantage of you? Uh, it, it certainly is still evolving and we're not exactly sure what it will look like in another, you know, two and a half years. Uh, but what we've been seeing though is employers really like the hybrid approach or online. The, um, online piece has really made, uh, it's given them access to more students. Um, and my employers are really interested in having you know, a combination of both in-person and hybrid events and I expect that to continue. But I really would love to have maybe Larry speak about the trends that you've seen within consulting recruitment over the last two years. So we have to do that, Marie. Also, just want to mention to the students, you know, uh, a little bit even longer than that, because you'll see average 
above average and below average. It all depends. And we don't know what it's going to be like two or three years from now. But uh, going into COVID, we were on an upward pro 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 uh, trajectory. Every year was getting better and better in consulting. And we were expanding our relationships with firms. Then, of course, we had the COVID slowdown and things were a little bit uncertain and hiring was tight. But in 2021 and 2022, we had extremely strong recruiting years for consulting. Then I would say because of inflation and uh, the, the change of the economy and, and other things, it's, it's slowed down considerably, this current academic year. And so it, that I would describe it as below average, but uh, it was way above average two years ago. And it was uh, growing before COVID. So who's to say what it's going to be in two years? But I would say it's going to be better than it is right now. I would predict that it's definitely going to be better than it is for now. There's going to be a strong recovery. And uh, consulting is always very popular. And consulting is never going to go away. And, and even in, a, in a, a slow year like this year, we're still getting students with great outcomes. And and the uh, the strongest students are getting multiple offers it, in every class, whether it's a a, uh, a good year or an average year or below average year, the strongest students are getting are getting offers, multiple offers. So, yeah, that, that's kind of a little bit more than uh, two years, Maureen. But I thought <laughs> I wanted to add that extra context. That's wonderful. Um, and what is online recruitment look like? Do you think that the online flex students will be able to fully participate in consulting recruiting? Oh, yes. Uh, so for online recruiting, as uh, Maureen mentioned earlier, most employers kind of like this hybrid approach. Uh, a lot of the office hours, employer presentations, and even first round interviews are virtual events. They save money, they save time, they're more efficient, they can get more, more uh, leadership uh, to participate. Uh, so we've seen that, I would say, uh, go from 100% virtual a couple of years ago in COVID lockdown uh, and a, a slight decline, but pretty much it's still about 80% virtual up through all of those things that I told. Second round interviews, uh, more and more becoming uh, in person with a lot of these consulting firms. Thank you very much. Um, and no Eric, we actually have a, a question I want to throw over to you. Um, if somebody wants to know, can we hear more about the entrepreneurship career support and how this program may be ben beneficial to an entrepreneur? Sure. A um, little bit about entrepreneurship. I'll just, you'll have to cut me off at some point because I can talk all night about it. We have a big event tomorrow night, actually. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. But um, at Georgetown, we view entrepreneurship as a mindset that every MBA student should have. And so it's not an industry. It's not a function. It's not a role. It's a mindset. And that's what our programs try to instill. We have uh, a university-wide initiative called Georgetown Entrepreneurship. And it's what I consider a family within a family. Um, these are like-minded people who, you know, maybe want to um, take that entrepreneurial mindset, um, take some extraordinary risks or go in some innovative um, directions and change the way things are done, start new ventures, um, change the way the world does things and really make a difference in the world. So we're, um, we're part of that. The MBA students are part of that. Uh, we have medical students, we have law students, we have undergraduates, we have alumni who all work together. And so there are some pitch competitions that take place. Some of these over the years have been virtual. Some are in person. Uh, our bark tank, which is a takeoff on the shark tank uh, with $100,000 plus in, in prize money to the, the top winners and so on. So um, a lot to do with that and um, just a real big community uh, and, and, and real big ecosystem um, that that takes place um, across the MBA programs and, and then across the university. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and I received a, a question talking about um, uh, banking and financial services recruitment. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, full-time recruitment is open to all students, whether you're a full-time or you're a Flex MBA student, whether you're in person or online. Um, and so definitely you would have access to our employers. Um, some of these firms may recruit through uh, national career fairs, so you definitely would do that. Now, if you're looking particularly in investment banking, you know there is a standard recruitment process where they're looking for summer interns who are then going to convert to full-time. 
obviously it's a problem for all of our flex students because you're working and you can't quit your job for a summer internship. Uh, but we actually had a student who will be graduating in May as a flex student who went through the full-time recruitment process and was able to secure an investment banking role and then did not have an investment banking role in the past. Um, I think he actually was switching from a strategy role. So we have techniques. Uh, we have a finance club that is a great resource to help you prepare for that. And of course, I would be very happy to work with you as an individual. Uh, usually what we recommend, assuming that you're going taking a three-year program, which you may not, um, we just held something called a recruitment launch for our students that are going to be graduating 2025. And that's to get them ready for full-time recruitment for next year. We want to spend the time with you, you know, before you're there to get you ready, get your resume, get your thinking. You know, if you want to do banking, that's going to be heavy networking. So let me, you know, so let's work with you in order to make that. Um, I actually right now would love to... Um, Go over to Asha to talk more about her careers because I think this covers a lot of really interesting opportunities that sometimes people don't think about. Yes, absolutely. So in terms of the recruitment timeline for social impact in a lot of government or international development related roles, it is a little bit later and it starts in the springtime. And so sometimes there'll be a lot more programming sort of in, you know, January, February, March timeframe. There is some recruitment earlier on in the fall and which is, you know, full-time recruitment in terms of some government roles, but majority of the recruitment happens later on. And, you know, there's so many different opportunities that students don't really think about sometimes when they start the MBA program. And, you know, halfway through, they start attending some events, either hosted by Net Impact or Clean Tech Club or Emerging Markets Club. And so these are some really great student organizations that you can participate in. And, you know, they'll bring um, speakers and different employers. And we also, as the Career Center, support them in this. And we also have some of our own uh, informational sessions and company presentations. And so students will come to this and learn a little bit more about these different industries. One um, industry that I would say is really getting a lot of popularity in the past couple of years across the board is renewable energy and clean tech space um, and energy transition because as we know, it's really something that um, we're working on here in the United States, as well as, you know, in different countries. And there's so many global priorities around this, which means there's going to be more jobs in this space. So a lot of students don't come into the program thinking that they want to go that route, but they end up going to recruitment events and getting really interested in some of these roles. And um, I would say it's definitely a space that you should keep your eye on. Um, and there's so many different intersections of, you know, health and clean tech or, you know, financial services and, you know, clean tech and energy and consulting and sustainability and uh, venture capital and sustainability. So it's so many different um, ways that it's really becoming a huge part of uh, the career world or, uh, you know, in career services. So I would say that's definitely something in my space that you should keep an eye out on. And if you want to talk about it and uh, prep for how to, you know, get ready for some of these interviews or how to tailor your resume and some of your portfolio to be um, more competitive in that space, I'm here as a resource. Thank you so much, Asha. I think one of the things that I can imagine um, many of students are thinking about, depending on, on where you are, uh, how do you network as part of an online um, you know, what are some tips for networking? So I'll just kind of open it up to anybody who wants to share some best practices for networking when you can't be in the same location as somebody. I'm happy to kick that off. Um, and, and I'll, and I'll point to LinkedIn, which may seem like the obvious answer, but, uh, I will say we, we did a trek out to California, uh, about 15 years ago when we visited LinkedIn, when LinkedIn was not what it is today and certainly not owned by Microsoft at that time. And, uh, we were in a conference room and, uh, outside the conference room two LinkedIn employees were throwing a football back and forth. It was pure Silicon Valley at its finest, um, 15 years ago, but LinkedIn is, is the way most all of our students are doing that. So it doesn't matter if you're a flex student or flex online or, or a full-time in-person student, uh, LinkedIn is, is usually the most updated and most current, 
um, you know, communication channel. And uh, it's, a, it's a very effective way to simply reach out and you can be connecting with people who are, you know, Georgetown alumni uh, or, you know, you know, um, and it doesn't have to just be from an MBA program, you know, here at Georgetown, it could be anywhere. So the whole Georgetown family that you're plugging into. Um, and as well, you could be plugging into your undergraduate um, alumni group as well. And then you're identifying your target companies where you want to be working and then doing some informational interviews and saying, oh, hey, I see you have an MBA. I'm getting my MBA. Could, could we get 15, 20 minutes just to talk? So, you know, we expect our MBAs to have that confidence to reach out and to, you know, knock on those doors, so to speak. And uh, that's part of the, the, the process of this word networking, which many people don't like the word. They feel it's like we're, we're you know, just using people. And no, we view it very much that you are building relationships and it's a relationship world. It's a relationship business. You're, you're in the business world. It's all about relationships. And so we want you to be building those. And if you're here over a three-year period and you're deliberate and, and uh, consistent about, hey, I'm going to reach out to a couple of people a week over three years, you've just built a magnificent network um, at all different you know, stages and, and whatnot. Um, and then through events, you're going to meet people through maybe an online presentation and then, you know, follow up with them afterwards. So it takes some proactivity. It takes some discipline. It takes some um, being deliberate about it. Um, but I'll, if I can just take one more second, we had a student who was on an online um, session. It was an online um, trek, in fact, um, with a company in California. There's a full time student who was based here in D.C. And they had um, a big event. Um, that student reached out to the organizer of the event and, and thanked that person, you know, personally through LinkedIn and then did a little post about, hey, I just spent, you know, this trek online with this company. Uh, he was invited to an interview. He scored the interview. He's going to be doing his summer internship there. Um, you know, amazing overall, again, well-planned, well-executed, not being disingenuous uh, and, and um, making connections. And that's what we'll help you do. Thank you, Eric. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I had a thought to share. <clears throat> One of the things you'll find, you know, whether you're on campus or online, and I know you'll get to come and join us, so we look forward to those moments too, um, is that the network at Georgetown is really rich. Um, many of the students just want to give back, and I suppose in other universities it's similar, but I feel like it's special at Georgetown. Um, this past week, I was coaching a student um, that Maureen and I assist, and I, I had this student reach out to a few alumni. One was a general um, alum, not from the business school, and when this gentleman reached out, he received this kind of a message. I love Georgetown. I can't wait to offer support. What do you need? Do you want to talk? Do you want to visit? And this was somebody that the student didn't know prior, nor did I. Um, and it was just that kind of reception, which you won't get every single time, but many times we get that kind of support and it really helps everything connect. It helps you all advance. Thank you for that. Um, we have a question about resources for career enhancers, which, of course, is very important again um, amongst our working professionals. Uh, does anybody want to tackle this one? I'm happy to answer if not. I can I can get us started anyway. Again, we talk we're very much it's the person on job search and working with you and where you are as an individual, um, and we know some of you are getting your MBA to, you love your job, you love what you do, and you just want to be able to be promoted in, versus some people are like, ah, oh, I'm at a plateau and I need to really transition. So um, we do, in the very beginning of our conversation, Eric talked about our summer webinar series where you work in your accomplishment records and your resume. We also have sessions throughout um, your time here with us for career enhancing. You know, how do you do this? How do you work with your employers? We also would do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I definitely have had you know, flex students who come in, you know, sometimes it's, they're on their way to class and they've had a really bad day and they need to talk to somebody and it's leading to, they're in a bad space and they need to transition. Other people are looking to be promoted. A wonderful conversation a couple of months ago, a student wants to do a startup within his organization and really talking about, um, you know, how to put together the business plan, how to approach people. So um, we are here to help you succeed in whatever way that you want. 
and we definitely if you if you love what you're doing and you love your career and you love your employer and just want to get promoted we're happy to help you with any of the conversations that you need to have with your your managers we do have a few more minutes if anybody has any other burning questions i know there was a question in the last session about um, you know, do do FX students have access to all the same alumni organizations recruiting opportunities? Yes, absolutely. As we mentioned in the beginning, we do not distinguish between them. Um, okay, and Larry, here's a question I'm going to send over to you. Can you describe how you assist veterans or active duty service members in their transition to the civilian sector? Oh, thank you, Maureen. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Georgetown University used to be ranked, I think it might still be ranked number one in terms of, uh, you know, for uh, a great university for veterans. Um, so I know it used to have that ranking, it may still. Um, and so what do we do in the MBA program in the McDonough School of Business? We have a, a McDonough Military Association, which is a group of veterans, and in, in each uh, incoming MBA class, there are approximately 30 veterans. 25 or so, 24, 25 would be uh, uh, veterans and no longer on active duty. And about four or five are sponsored by their service and are remaining on active duty. They all belong to McDonough Military Association. And of course, they all join different career focus clubs and have access to uh, career services and, and any one of the coaches that are on this panel, as well as the other coaching resources that we have. So I would say in just very quickly, in short summary, our veterans do great, the ones that get in, engaged uh, and involved and, uh, and that sort of thing. And we've got a strong uh, alumni network uh, across not just veterans, but uh, as, every, as, as Eric and, and Trudy and others have mentioned, you can take advantage uh, of, of the network. And uh, But we have great resources for veterans. So I'll stop there. Thank you. So a follow-up question, which actually is really not the Next question, I think, for our team, more of a program office, how would the FLEX program work for an active duty member who could potentially deploy? Um, I, you would, our program office is phenomenal. They are great and they would work with you. And I'm sure if you needed to deploy and put your classes on hold, they definitely would work for you. Um, we've seen that happen um, before it was uh, a FLEX program, when it was still the district or evening program. We certainly had students take leave of absence for active duty and then come back. So I have no doubt that we get a lot of support for that. And I would probably, if you need more information on that, maybe send an email to the, to, to the admissions team um, or Brianna can help it get more information on that. Um, and so we have a, a, a great question. Do you work with international employers at all if, inter if students are interested um, in a role with a global company outside the United States? We do have... Um, some employers who hire our students for um, international locations. So um, any of my colleagues want to talk about some of that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, and I guess we can probably name a few names here and without <laughs> <laughs> favoring any any group over another. Um, but we have had um, our Georgetown students you know, get roles with Amazon, for example, um, in Japan and in the uh, United Kingdom and uh, in Mexico, and of course, you know, across the United States. And there may be a few others that, I, that I'm just forgetting right now. Um, in other cases, um, you know, we'll, we'll work with you to say, hey, you know, I worked with a student a number of years back who was moving to Spain, and we had to figure out, you know, where he's gonna work in Spain. And so we'll put together just an individualized plan on, okay, what alumni do we have there? Who else do we know? You know, what are there are there employers that our our, our professors know? Um, we just go out to the network, and and he ended up, you know, he got something, and uh, and he's now there and married with his with his you know wife, and it's a great story. Um, you know, part of this program will then be, of course, you know, international treks and international consulting projects that that you'll do, and so. Um, great, we love it. If, if you have uh, an interest, you know, in a particular destination, we'll we'll help you, you know, navigate to get there. Um, these global projects you probably talked about at another time, but you know, they're they're all around the world on most of the continents. And um, again, relationships through our professors, our our global uh, our global team, 
and uh, another alumni. So yeah, Georgetown is global. So that, yeah. that's great that you want to pursue that. And we have, um, you know, when you look at the broader university, again, not just our MBA program, uh, we have alumni around the world and we have regional alumni groups. And we have a few of them, Spain is, is one of them, that are very, very active. And so one of the things we can help you connect with that group of alumni. Um, and I think we just have a few minutes left. Um, maybe we could just do a quick round with parting wisdom <laughs> before we go. Um, uh, Trudy, any last words you want to give our students before we go? Oh, that's a toughie, right? <laughs> um, yeah, we, we hit so many topics. I guess, you know, I would go back to just be open-minded and realize there are some interesting intersections and in careers, and there may be some growth or some opportunities that pop up where you don't expect it. Um, Larry? Yeah, I just want to wish everybody good luck. I know you're making decisions, and I think uh, based on what you heard from us as well as what you heard from that student panel, I think... Uh, you should be impressed. Uh, we do have, uh, we consider ourselves best in class in terms of career services. And so, uh, you know, good luck with your decision. Thank you. Uh, Asha? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know we touched on a lot of topics. I kind of wanted to share a quick, you know, a story from one of our uh, Flex students from the previous year. She actually attended um, one of the career fairs, one of the national career fairs, and she wasn't sure if she wanted to stay on with her current role or go somewhere else. And, you know, we suggested to her that, hey, that booth over there is, you know, accepting roles. If you just scan in the QR code, if you're able to, you know, go through the entire interview process. And she's like, well, I haven't really thought about that company. She went up and she ended up doing the process. And, you know, just recently she got a full time position with a pay raise increase. And um, now she'll be at Morgan Stanley. And that wasn't really what she expected. But, you know, she took a chance and, you know, she's really happy with the success. And so. A lot of opportunities are going to be online, but sometimes it's good to also, you know, you know, when you can and have the availability, try and do some things in person. And yeah, that's my other tip. Thank you. Eric? Sure. Well, you know, I guess Georgetown is a special place and someone mentioned that earlier. And um, one of the great benefits of Georgetown is the, the brand recognition around the world. You can be in Hong Kong, you can be in Moscow, you can be in Tel Aviv, and you're going to be jogging by somebody who's wearing a Georgetown T-shirt. Uh, and so it, it is, you know, a globally recognized brand. And, you know, it's a, it's a big investment to, to take on. And so my guidance would be to, you know, have a clear point of view of what you want to get out of the MBA. What do you want to learn? Uh, with whom do you want to network? Um, do you want to enhance your career? Do you want to switch your career? Uh, and, and be deliberate about that and, and know, you know, what industries, what roles, what functions. Yes, keep some space out there to um, have other doors open. We've had students come here and go into something they had never thought existed and and they're doing great with it. But also come in with point of view. So you're not going to have a whole lot of time to discern in the midst of the classes and your work and your life and your family and community. I got my master's at night and you don't have a lot of breathing room. So try to do some of that thinking as you apply uh, and come in with a point of view and, and then, again, be flexible once you get here. So all the best with your decision making, your, your discernment. We'd love to be able to work with you in the future. Thank you, everyone. So, Brianna, awesome. I think we're at time. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I really appreciate you all. Maureen, Asha, Eric. Um, Lawrence and Trudy, um, so sweet. I appreciate you get you guys giving your time and your career expertise. Um, thank you 